Tonight is one of the most celebrated Australian statesmen of modern times. He started his career as the entertainment officer at a club in Sydney and has risen to the heights of being the Australian cultural attaché to the court of St. James. I couldn't agree more with the critic who said that he impugns the fundamental refinement of the Australian character. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. <laughs> Yes. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a handful of Vaseline or something. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too bad. Oh, dear. Now, of course, images... Im Oh, sorry, Mike. What is it I've got in my hands? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ointment I'm supposed to use. <laughs> I, was, I was just giving myself a quick application before the shower. <laughs> I'm supposed to use an applicator, but I generally do. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah. Now, let's, let's talk... <laughs> You'll be all right on your next trip to the Philippines, mate. <laughs> Are you with me? No worries. Now, this thing about image is obviously terribly important. I mean, that's part of your job. Now, what is it, what's the image that you're trying to, to project? I think you'd better phrase that again, Michael. I think... <laughs> What is the image that I am bloody successful in projecting? <laughs> and that is, as a, Australia, as a thinking organism. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very many moons ago. What you do to old Brian Humphrey, you just heard Edley, the poor bastard with ashes. <laughs> I seen him out there. Oh, gosh, you must have given him a rough time. <laughs> We talked about getting on the grog. Oh, Christ, eh? Been stuck into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very good to be here on the Parky Show. You know, you could say this is the International Year of Australia already, couldn't you, Mike? Well, you could. It's been fantastic, the publicity we're getting, and largely due to the efforts of my good self. You know, it wasn't many moons ago that they thought we were a bunch of rough diamonds down. <laughs> but, you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. <laughs> you know, no worries. Well, I suppose that they talk about culture, the main thing that people know Australia for now, the, the movie industry, the films, Australian films. Have you got anything to do with them at all? Yes, I kicked it off. You did you? <laughs> oh, yes, I was... Uh... <laughs> I was very much instrumental in getting movies off the ground in Australia. They'd been going along a long time with Chip Rafferty and that uh, fraternity, but they needed to be dragged kicking and screaming into the 20th century, Mike. And uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the role. I'm very proud of the role that I've played there. You know... The trouble with the film industry, as it is with the yachts in general today, is that the, the poofter element. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Don't get me wrong on that score, ladies and gentlemen. Please. <laughs> you know, I see eye to eye with old Ken Livingston in that particular matter. But what I'd like to say is this, that, you know, there are a lot of... Uh, the industry needs a fair bit of weeding out and, uh, you know, it's rife with the pufters in Australia, as it is here. You know, uh, I had a lovely idea for a film a few years ago. It was going to be... It was about a football team uh, going to the bush. It was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock. <laughs> and uh, by the time... No, are you with me? By the time the Puff Mafia, or the Puffia as I call them, had got onto that, they'd cut, turned them all into Sheilas, drifting around in the nursery curtains, and getting eaten by the Abos in there. 
But what about a film like Gallipoli, which has had tremendous critical acclaim both here and in America? Again, you see, the movie industry's got out of my hands. Gay Lippoli, in my opinion, is a better description of that thought. Two fellas, I don't say they're shirt lifters. I don't say that. I don't say they're shirt lifters. But they could be. They could be. And that's how it comes across, you know? Giving the Turks the wrong idea. You know? Mind you, they've had the wrong idea for a year or two, haven't they? Eh? Uh, no do, you, do, do you know many uh, people within the film industry intimately, though? I mean, I'm thinking of actors or actresses. <laughs> well, I do, naturally. I've had to... <laughs> you hear the boys in the band over there, for Christ's sake, eh? That'll do, fellas, eh? <laughs> I've been a bit... I've done a bit of casting, Mike. I've done a bit of... I mean, it's not for nothing I'm known as the Protestant Lou Gray. I am. We've got a lot in common, you know. Well, we're a couple of tycoons. And it's significant, isn't it, that old Lou's enterprise is being taken over by an Aussie corporation, an Aussie conglomerate. A conglomerate. And uh, they're a bit afraid, of course, it'll lose its Englishness, but old Lord Grey, English? Well, rumour has it he's a Bulgarian tap dancer. I don't know. <laughs> but he's very nice and a close personal friend, I hasten to yes, say. Well, you've got many, many But friends. a lot of the actresses, you know, I mean, uh, I know them all personally. I can't name names on this show because, uh, you know, there's been moments when when my fidelity to my wife has been put to a pretty severe test <laughs> and come off second best, I can tell you. <laughs> can you think of, uh, of any, I mean, was this a question of girls being, being forward, being uh, oh. overwhelmed by your sexuality? They do get a bit. You know, I, was, uh, I had an embarrassing experience uh, in a London taxi. Uh, hmm? uh, yes. We were, I had this little lass. <laughs> she was a star of one of my films. And uh, we, I was showing her the sights of run, and you know, Buckminster Castle, St Paul's <laughs> Abbey, <laughs> Trafalgar Circus, and we're driving around. And I kid you not, you know, this little Sheila done a streak in the back seat of the car. Yes. Oh, I didn't know where to look. <laughs> and we got to our destination, the driver says, that'll be so and so, you know. And uh, he says, how are you going to pay me? And she, fl oh, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but she done an Erica. <laughs> She done an Erica, but not the top part. She flashed the map of Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. Now, no. For those of you who aren't too crash out of the geography, Tasmania is a triangular continent. A bit on the bushy side. No, no please. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, the driver said, haven't you got anything smaller? <laughs>